Okay, good morning again, everybody, and sorry for uh for being how many twenty seven minutes late. Uh, problem with my connectivity, and I just uh, I was just able to connect right now. So again, um, uh, for for those who uh who are not um oh, sa mga hindi na nakapagantay dun sa class for today. Uh, what I'll do is give you a link to the recording to my lecture on the second uh, part of uh, module number three or the last part of module number three, which is basically, uh, I think the topics there na kailangan pa natin i-discuss a module is the proof of the minimality of the L2 norm of omega when the interpolatory abscesses were chosen to be the roots of the Legendre polynomial. So ito ay sinasabi ko kanina, uh, pinaka, uh, pinakamaliit na posibleng L2 norm ni Omega ay kapag ka yung mga X sub J's ay pinili natin to be the roots of the Legendre polynomial. So, it is in parallel to what we did last time but with respect to the L infinity norm. Sabi natin na minimize yung L2 norm ng error sa interpolation process kapag ka ang pinili natin mga interpolatory abscesses ay um ay yung mga roots ng Chebyshev polynomial. So ngayon, kung L2 norm naman yung gusto nating i-minimize, ang kailangan nating piliin X sub J's would be the roots of the Legendre polynomial if we are on the interpolatory interval negative 1 to 1. Okay? Kasi ganun din yung problema, di ba? Kasi yung Legendre polynomials, they're only defined on the closed interval negative 1 to 1. So yung mga roots o mga abscesses na makukuha mo from the Legendre polynomials ay nasa negative 1 to 1 lamang. Okay? But if your interpolatory abscessa, ah uh, sorry, if your interpolatory interval is larger than negative 1 to 1 or actually hindi pala larger no, pag hindi negative 1 to 1 yung inyong uh, interpolatory abscessas, kailangan niyo ulit i-translate yung um, yung mga roots ng Legendre polynomial and you can do so by using um, the formula let me see uh formula in equation 3.5 so it's uh the x sub i will be chosen as b minus a all over 2 times r sub i plus a plus b over 2 so kapares din ng translation ng roots ng uh, ng Chebyshev polynomials para sa mga intervals other than negative 1 to 1 okay so for the remainder of the time, so yung theoretical aspect niya, uh, the discussion from page, uh, what? Anong page na nga ba tayo? Uh, discussion starting from pay, uh, from theorem 3.3, that's page um, 13 of uh, the uh, the module, hanggang page 14, konti na lang naman pala yun. So pakipanood na lamang dun sa recording na ililink ko sa inyo later, okay? So siguro para hindi sayang yung pagpunta nyo ngayon, I'll show you the MATLAB code that I'm using for um, for the Legender polynomial. Now, para matulungan na rin kayo sa laboratory exer. So uh, magiging parallel yung laboratory exercise for Monday dun sa ginawa nyo last week. Pero ngayon, uh, uh, yung ibibigay ko naman ay, o ang ipapagawa ko namang interp uh, AIP ay yung AIP na may pinakamaliit na L2 norm. Okay? So instead of Chebyshev, ang gagamitin nyo lamang ay uh, yung roots ng Legendre polynomial. So doon uli iikot yung laboratory exercise. So I, I guess it would be easier uh, than last week. Kung nahirapan kayo last week, hopefully ito ay mas familiar na kayo. Kasi mangyayari lamang parang uulitin nyo lang yung ginawa nyo from last week kaya lang Legendre polynomial yung gagamitin. I'm still thinking if I will change the function, okay? Or papagawa ko na lang siguro ay yun ulit. Ano? Uh, I'll think about it and I'll upload the laboratory exercise later tonight. Okay? Para rin masimula nyo na siya uh, if you want to uh, to start doing it over the weekend or on early Monday. Okay? So let me share my screen. Uh, share ko yung MATLAB code na kinagamit ko. Okay, so I hope you can see my MATLAB uh, screen now. So, ito yung, ano, ito yung code na ang ginawa ko kasi dito, I wrote something. Uh, remember when we uh, 
when we were talking about the Lagrange form earlier in the semester. So ang ginawa ko ay uh, nagsulat ako ng code for for that. Yun pa rin to, ito yung mismong file na ginamit ko noon. Kaya wala nagkaroon na siya, nagdagdag na ako ngayon ng mga layers. When we learn Chebyshev interpolation and now when we learn a Legendre polynomial, nakita natin na Lagrange form pa rin siya pero iba na yung pagpili ng mga interpolatory abscissas. So what I did is I am building up on the code that I have earlier in the semester habang uh, habang natututo tayo ng iba't ibang mga interpolatory techniques. So kaya uh, mahalaga na tinatago niyo yung mga codes niyo kasi aside from the laboratory exercises, baka gamitin niyo pa rin sila pagdating ng ating uh, problem set. Okay? So let's uh, let's discuss the parts of the code and what I do is so meron ako former code tapos hindi ko na hindi na ako nagsusulat ng hiwalay na program for Lagrange for Lagrange, for Chebyshev, and for uh, Legendre kasi connected naman sila. So, ang ginagawa ko na lamang ay kinocomment ko na lamang yung mga parts na hindi ko kailangan halimbawa sa Legendre or yung mga hindi ko kailangan sa Chebyshev uh, polynomials. Okay? So, tapos, inactivate ko na lang yung mga lines kapag kayo na yung kailangan kong gamitin. Okay? So, let's see. What are the differences from the previous uh, codes that I used? Okay, andito pa rin yung... Okay, i and comment ko tong clear kasi mahalaga yung clear para fresh yung uh, yung session ko ng MATLAB. So I still have clear and then close all. And then if you look at uh, line number five, I now have another symbolic variable. Dati ang symbolic variable ko lang ay X. Ngayon meron na akong capital L na symbolic variable. Capital L will be uh, will be the will be a vector consisting of symbolic expressions. Dito ko ilalagay yung mga Legendre polynomials. Kasi isang problema dun sa Legendre polynomials, wala tayong formula diretso sa pagkuhan ng roots ng Legendre polynomial. Remember sa Shebyshev, bandali, kasi it's cosine ng 2, 2j minus 1 times pi over 2 times uh, 2 times j, right? So, yun yung formula para sa roots ng, uh, ng Chebyshev polynomials. But unfortunately, wala tayong ganong klaseng formula sa, sa Legendre polynomials. So, kaya ang gagawin ko, I am using first-order programming uh, skills here. Uh, hindi ako gumagamit ng fancy uh, commands. Ano? So, talagang yung basic yung ginagamit ko. So, kaya ang gagawin ko, uh, remember, ang Legendre polynomials I defined sa atin using... Uh, using a recursive formula that is in uh, what that is in equation um, or that is in definition 3.4 so para makuha ayon degree in legendre polynomial kela ko yung two previous legendre polynomials so kaya iipunin ko yung mga legendre polynomials into the vector l okay kaya kailangan alam ni matlab na yung vector l ay magkakontain ng mga symbolic variables. So that vector will be tagged as a symbolic variable. Okay? Otherwise, isipin niya, ano, ang laman na yon ay mga ano lang. Ang laman nun ay, ang laman ni L ay mga, uh, mga constants or scalars lamang or complex numbers lamang. So just to make sure, I wrote, uh, 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 I included L as a symbolic variable. And then, ito yung mga parts nung, uh, nung Nung program. The first part, naglagay na ako ng mga sections ng program ngayon. The first part will be the initialization of the abscissas and function values. Okay. So dito, i-declare ko na ano yung mga interpolatory abscissas na gagamitin ko. So if you are, um, if you're using, say, equally spaced points, so you simply uncomment uh, lines 9 and 10. Ito yung gagamitin ko kapag uh, equally spaced yung points na ginagamit. Sorry, may typo pa. So, mali yung spelling ng space. And then, if, uh, say, I have uh, specific x sub j's. Kung given sa problem yung x sub j's, so, meron ka lamang ditong t equals kung ano man yung mga x sub i's or x sub j's na given dun sa problem. Right? So, this uh, this line, yung 9 to, say, line, nine, lines 9 to 11, ay kapag ka predetermined yung gagamitin mo ng mga x sub j's. Alright? 
pag hindi naman, so i-comment ko lang tong mga line na yan. So, pwede kong kung pwedeng gamitin niyo yung uh, comment button dito sa sa editor tab. So, meron siyang comment or you can press control R para pag pinrest niyo yung mga yung mga highlighted uh, highlighted lines ay magiging isang comment. Okay. And then if I was asked to find the interpolatory interval that will minimize the L infinity norm of the error, ang gagamitin ko ay Chebyshev roots, right? So if that's the case, then I'm just going to uncomment lines 13 to 17 because lines 13 to 17 calculates the uh, roots of the Chebyshev polynomial. Okay. So kaya lang ganito yung ginagawa ko kasi uh, kapag, ka merong, kapag, ka gagam, kapag gusto mo ay degree n, yung interpolatory uh, polynomial o yung uh, AIP, yung algebraic interpolating polynomial, kailangan mo ng degree, uh, kailangan mo ng n plus 1 points, right? So you will need to find the roots of the, deg of the degree n plus 1 Chebyshev polynomial. Kaya declare ko ng hiwalay kung ano yung degree nung Chebyshev polynomial na kailangan ko. And that's what is in line number 14. Tapos pag alam po na, anong degree ng Chebyshev polynomial? And again, the degree of the Chebyshev polynomial that you want to use is one more than the degree of the AIP that you need. Alright? So, limbawa dito, degree 9, yung nag-run ako ng example, I think this is for homework, uh, for the last uh, laboratory exercise. Degree 9 yung Chebyshev na kailangan ko, so declare ko siya. And so, from 1 until the deg until the degree of the Chebyshev polynomial, nag-run lang ako ng for loop para compute yung mga roots ng Chebyshev polynomial na yun. Again, I don't need to, to uh, define or to compute the Chebyshev polynomials kasi meron tayong explicit formula from remark 3 point, uh, what's the remark number? Uh, 3 point... In remark 3.1, we have the formula for the roots of the degree n Chebyshev poly polynomial. So, kaya dito, diretsyo, nakocompute ko yung t sa bias kagan. This is the cosine of 2j minus 1 all over 2 times the degree of the Chebyshev polynomial times pi. So, at this step at line 16 or after the for loop, lines 15 to 17 is carried out, I'm going to have... Uh, uh, Chebby degree number of t sub i's. Okay? So, dahil ang focus natin ngayon ay Legender polynomials, kaya naka-comment uh, naka itong lines 13 to 17. Alright? And this would be the, the main point for today, yung Legender roots. Okay? So, that's lines. Medyo mahaba to kasi nga wala tayong explicit formula for the uh, for the roots of the Legendre polynomial. I remember I was looking for it last semester at hindi ko siya mahanap. Ano? Or I believe there is a formula, pero I don't know if how, or I don't know how easy is the formula for the, uh, uh, the formula for the roots. Uh, bakit nga ba hindi ko siya sinasama? It's either super complicated yung formulas or it's beyond the, uh, the scope of the course or may mga prerequisite topics na kailangan or bakit nga ba? Hindi <laughs> ko matanda kung bakit hindi ko sinama yung formula ng roots ng Legendre polynomials because one thing is that uh, Legendre polynomials are just polynomials and MATLAB is very good at handling polynomials. Kaya hindi na ako nag-bother hanapin yung formula para sa roots ng Legendre polynomial kasi hindi siya ganun ka-obvious, right? So, ito yung naive programming. So, you can use some fancier uh, programming uh, techniques. Ano? So, pwede nyo itong program probably in a more uh, efficient or in a more convenient form. Pero ito yung parang first order. Ito yung pinakamadaling programming technique. Pinaka-basic. Ano? So, I'm just typing or translating into MATLAB command what is in the handouts or what is in the module. Okay? So, tingnan natin. For the legend or roots, Kailangan ko munang i-identify ano yung degree ng Legendre polynomial yung kailangan kong gamitin. So, I think for this problem, I'll use, uh, if I need an AIP of degree 8, then I will use the Legendre polynomial of degree 9. 
Kasi kung kailangan ko ng AIP na degree 8, kailangan ko ng 9 abscissas. And remember, to minimize the L2 norm of the error, I'm going to choose the roots of the Legendre polynomial as our interpolatory abscissas. So kailangan ko ng N plus 1 na roots, kung degree N, yung gusto kong AIP. So para makakuha ng N plus 1 uh, ng n plus 1 roots, kailangan ko isang degree n plus 1 Legendre polynomial. Okay? So, I'll declare that in line 20. And then, kailangan ko ngayong i-define ano yung mga Shebyshev polynomials. Or basically, kailangan ko munang, kailangan ko i-compute kung ano yung itsura ng degree 9 for this case. Kailangan ko kunin yung itsura ng degree 9 Legendre polynomial kasi yun yung hanapan ko ng root. But the only information that we're given to you about the Legendre polynomials is their uh, recursive definition. Okay, so ginagamit natin yung two previous Legendre polynomials para compute yung current Legendre polynomial. So ngayon, it define yung recursion ayon yung nasa definition 3.4. So basically, definition 3.4 is telling us that the degree zero Legendre polynomial is equal to one. So, yun yung tinawag ko dito na LO sa so line number 21. Uh, inihiwalay ko yung degree 0 Legendre polynomial kasi ang indexing ni MATLAB ay nag-start sa 1. So, para hindi na ako malito pag adjust ng index, hindi ko na isasama si, si uh, P sub 0 o si Legendre polynomial of degree 0 doon sa vector L. Para yung I at entry ni vector L, ang laman niya ay yung degree I. Legendre polynomial. So, kasi kung isasama ko si L sub 0, uh, si P sub 0, yung degree 0 Legendre polynomial, kailangan kong i-adjust yung indexing ng vector L. And I don't want to confuse you with the indexing, so hiniwalay ko na lang. Hindi ko na sinama sa vector L yung degree 0 Legendre polynomial. So, ginawa ko, yung unang entry ng symbolic vector L ay yung degree 1. Legendre polynomial, which is x. Tapos yung second content ng vector L is the degree 2 Legendre polynomial, and that is uh, according to uh, table 3.2, that's 3, 3 halves times x squared minus 1 half. Okay? Tapos ngayon, pwede na ako mag for loop para makuha yung degree 3 pataas na Legendre polynomial. Okay? Ginagawa ko to kasi para makarating sa degree uh, ba, para makarating sa degree 9 Legendre polynomial, kailangan ko yung Legendre polynomial of degree 8 and 7. Okay? Eh yung 8 and 7 kinocompute sila using previous Legendre polynomial. So, kaya humaba yung paghanap ng Legendre roots kasi kailangan ko muna makita ano yung mga previous Legendre polynomials. Okay? So, and that's what uh, lines 25 to 27 are for, right? Kokompute niya yung L3 hanggang dun sa Legendre polynomial that I need to use in my interpolation process. So, remember the ith entry of the vector L will be the degree I uh, Legendre polynomial. So, here L, L of I, so ito yung ith content ng vector L, I equals the degree I Legendre polynomial. So it is 2i minus 1 divided by i times x times the previous Legendre polynomial minus i minus 1 over i times the Legendre polynomial 2 degrees back. Okay? Sorry, kailangan ko siyang basahin kasi din double check ko siya ngayon dun sa, dun sa nasa handout. Ano? Kasi tinipe ko to the other day. So, baka may na-missed ako. Alright? So, eto, kinompute ko yung Legendre polynomials. So, meron na ako ngayong isang vector of length, the uh, the degree of the, of the desired Legendre polynomial. So, sa line 20, dineclare ko kailangan ko yung Legendre polynomial of degree 9. So, once lines 25 to 27 are done, magkakaroon na ako ng isang vector na merong laman na 9 entries na ang bawat isang entry doon ay yung mga Legendre polynomials. Okay? Pero ang kailangan ko lang namang gamitin ay yung pinakadulo na laman ni vector L. Kasi yun yung Legendre polynomial that we are interested in. So what I did in line 29, 
is I overwrote the vector L. Papaltan ko na kasi yung huling Legender polynomial lang naman yung kailangan ko. So sa line 29, sinabi ko kay MATLAB, ah, kalimutan mo na yung vector L na ang laman ay lahat ng Legender polynomials. Palitan mo na lamang si L ng isang vector na iisa lang yung laman. At ang laman niya dapat ay yung, yung pinakahuling entry ng original vector L. Okay? So in this particular case, since Legender degree is equal to 9, so L will now be replaced by just L of 9. So yung line 29, gagawin niyang isa na lamang, yung laman ni vector L, at ang laman na yon is the Legender polynomial of the desired degree. Okay? Tapos, ang gagawin ko, si L ngayon, yung bagong value ni L, yung, pinaka, yung pinakahuling Legender polynomial na kinompute natin, which is of the desired degree, siya yung hahanapan ko ng roots. Tapos, remember, roots ng polynomial, maning-maniya kay MATLAB, right? Kaya lang, medyo kailangan, kunin mo yung coefficients ng polynomial L. At para doon yung line 30, right? Remember, sa pagkocompute ng roots ng isang polynomial, ang input na tinatanggap lang ni MATLAB ay yung coefficient, uh, ay yung vector of coefficients of the polynomial. So, yun yung gagawin ng sim to poly command. So, gagawin ni sim to poly, right? sim to poly L, will give us a vector. And yung vector, vector ng laman ay yung coefficients noong polynomial L. And I will store it in the variable coefs. Tapos once I have harvested the, the coefficients of the Legender polynomial, hanapin ko na ngayon yung roots. Kaya ng computing ngayon yung MATLAB yung roots given a vector of coefficients. And that's what is called roots. So kailangan nyo lang yung command the roots of ang input kay roots ay yung coefficient vector ng polynomial L which was computed in line 30. And then once I have the roots, I will assign it to the variable T. Yan yung ginagawa ng line 31. Okay? So meron na ako ngayong roots. Simple lang naman yung mga roots ng Legendary polynomial. So that means there would be, uh, they will be unique. So ibig sabihin, puno na meron akong uh, Legendary degree number of roots. Tapos ngayon, para hindi ko na i-input ulit kung ilan yung roots ng... Uh, Nag, uh, kung ilan yung interpolatory abscissas na gagamitin ko, I assigned num points to be equal to the length of the vector t. So ito yung isa ko pa palang binago because before I am using the size command. Uh, dati ito yung ginamit ko. Uh, I used uh, num points equals size of t, comma 2. Ito yung ginamit ko dati na command. Pero kasi itong size t kama ito nga pala is defined, uh, is uh, actually this is uh, designed for matrices or multidimensional arrays. Kasi rito, titingnan niya, ano yung size ni vector t, uh, ni matrix t, in the second dimension. So titingnan niya, ilan yung number of columns. Pag ginawa kong 1 yan, ibibigay niya sa akin yung number of rows. Pag ginawa ko yung 3 yan, i-assume niya meron akong 3-dimensional matrix, titingnan niya yung third component. Gano'ng kahaba yung third components or ilang yung laman ng third components ng aking multidimensional matrix. Pero kung vector lang naman yung meron ka, it's highly advisable na gamitin ay si length. Kasi dun sa size kapag ka naging uh, 1 by Diba, naging 1 by 2, naging uh, output na itong size command na to, na 2 yung second input ay yung number of columns. Pero ang pag nangyari, pag yung vector ko ay naging 5 by 1, yung size t2 ibibigay niya ay equal kay 1, hindi yung 5 na usual length niya. Right? So kaya pinalitan ko siya kasi dito sa coefs, parang baligtad. Uh, kung dati ay 1 by n, uh, dito sa coefs ibibigay niya sa akin ay n by 1. So medyo nabaligtad. So para hindi ko na siya i-adjust at magta-transpose ako, so ginawa ko na lang, imbes na gumamit ng size command, pag-compute ng size ng mga vectors, ang gagamitin ko na lang ay length command. Okay? Sabi niya, gano kahaba yung vector? Okay? So here, uh, yun na yung number of points. 
Tapos, before I do the interpolation process, tatanungin ko muna si user, gusto mo bang i-translate yung roots? So, if you put translate roots equals zero here or any, any other number, i-skip ni MATLAB yung lines 39 to 41. Kung gusto mong i-translate yung root, gawin mo tong one. Okay? Kung ayaw mo nang i-translate yung root, ibig sabihin, tama na, negative one to one na yung interpolatory interval mo, gawin mo tong zero. Okay? Pero dito, halimbawa, inasong ko lang na gusto kong i-translate yung mga roots sa kinompute ko, kaya ginawa ko tong one. And if you want to translate the roots, uh, it is important that you consider the new interpolatory interval. Okay? So yung new int, kailangan mong i-declare. Tapos itong lines 39 to 41, ito yung implementation ng formula 3.5. Okay? Actually, parehas to sa Shebyshev roots at saka sa Legender roots. Isa lang yung translation formula. So they will follow uh, equation 3.5. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga entries ni T ay mababago, right? I-stretch kasi natin yung, uh, yung kung saan natin kinukuha yung roots ng Legendre polynomial and ganun din yung Shebyshev, ano? So, kailangan ko lang yung second component ni new interval. So, remember sa new interval, uh, uh, dineclare ko si 0, 5, halimbawa, for example. So, you'll just change it if you have a different interpolatory interval. So, ang new int 2 ay si 5, siya yung second component. Yung new int of 1, siya yung first component. So, tawagin ko, tong, uh, tawagin ko yung first component na A, tawagin ko yung second component na B. So, if you go to equation 3.5, kailangan mo yung B minus A divided by 2 times the previous value at yung untranslated root. So, kukunin ko lang yung entry doon kay vector t na na-compute natin kanina, be it the roots of the Legendre polynomial or the roots of the Shebyshev polynomial. Okay? So, t lang siya plus, eto naman yung a plus b over 2 na nandoon sa, na nandoon sa equation 3.5. Sinortcut ko lang yung mean, eto yung average ng laman ni new interval, which is basically dalawa lang naman yung laman ni new int, so eto yung a plus b over 2. Okay. Tapos, pag na-compute na ni MATLAB yung translation, gagawin ko ng interpolatory interval ay yung uh, interval consisting of the minimum value of t and the maximum value of t. Alright? Tapos ngayon, ready na ako. Lang ko na yung mga x sub j's. And then, th at this stage, we will just be repeating the Lagrange form. Okay? So, lines 45 downwards, ito na yung code na pinakita ko pa sa inyo using uh, when, we, when we talk about the Lagrange form. Okay. So, sa line 47, kocomputing ko yung data points, yung y components ng data points. Tinawag ko siyang vector d. So, limawa dito, ang ginagawa ko ay logarithm ng x plus 2. Pero ito pala yung nandun sa, nandun sa problem set uh, Previously, hindi ko na siya na-edit. So, alimbawa, i-recreate ko yung nandun sa, nandun sa example 3.4. So, I need arctangent ng mga x sub j's minus e raised to x sub j's plus 0 0.5 plus x sa equation, uh, nasa example 3.4. So, tinipe ko lang yung, um, yung function. And then here, the interpolatory interval was, uh, we were told that it's negative 5 to 3. So, yung in new in ko dapat ay negative 5 to 3. And then, we were told to compute for the AIP that will minimize the L2 norm of the error na degree 11, uh, using 11 nodes dapat. So, ito yung sabi sa equation 3.4. Interpolate the function f over negative 5 to 3 using 11 nodes. Kagamit ako ng labing isang nodes, so ibig sabihin yung Legendre degree dapat ay equal kay 11. Okay, so paltan ko yung line 20. And then, ano pa bang kailangan kong paltan? Okay na, naka-deactivate yung, yung equally spaced, naka-deactivate yung Shebyshev roots. So, I'm good. Uh, Legendre roots yung naka-on. Tapos, naka-on naman yung translate roots. Okay? One yung value, so ita translate niya. Na-update ko na yung new interval. 
And then, lagrange na lamang yung i-gagawin natin. So, meron na akong ilang pagbabago dun sa code na finlash ko last time. So, pinalitan ko yung size ay yung upper bound dun sa for loop. I think it was in line 53. Size pa rin yung ginamit ko dati, pero dahil na-compute ko na yung size ni vector t o yung length ni vector t above, pinaltang ko, siya na, pinaltang ko na siya ng num points. So, paki-update na lang yung mga codes nyo kung sinusundan nyo yung codes na ginamit ko. But essentially, lines 50 to 59 are the same parts that we used uh, in the Lagrange form. Tapos, post-processing na lang, uh, line 61 to 68, pag-graph na lamang yan. Okay? Uh, nothing new there. Tapos, siguro, last na lang, uh, sorry, overtime na, uh, you can go if you need to rush to your next class. Pero if you want to stay, uh, tapusin ko lang, lines 90 to 98. Siguro ito yung pagkocompute ng omega. Pakita ko lang yung pagkocompute ng omega. Alright. Or siguro i-run na lang muna natin yung, yung AIP. Ano? So i-run ko tong AIP. So hopefully we recreate whatever is on the handout or on the module. So run ko lang yan. Okay. I don't know what's happening pero parang ano. Ang bagal ni, uh, ang bagal ni MATLAB 2022B. Yung latest version sa laptop ko. Nag-update ako last week eh. So pero medyo mabagal siya. Oh. So, ito yung degree 11, uh, finally. Ito yung degree 11, uh, Legendre polynomial. Of course, ito yung naka-pretty uh, naka form. Uh, let me see. Ang haba niya. So, ito yung symbolic. But uh, I don't want you to write this fractional or this exact form. So, doon na lang ako sa naka-VPA na output. So, ito na yun. So this line, uh, 5.703 times 10 to the uh, times uh, 10 to the minus 6, x to the 10th, plus 4.39 times 10 to the negative 5, x to the 9th, and so on. Ito yung polynomial p, then and then sa example 3.5. Practicing or checking your code um, or running your code for the first time, you can try to recreate what is on the uh, the module. Hindi nyo kailangang ma-recreate eksakto kung ano man yung nasa module kasi baka magkakaiba tayo ng programming language na ginagamit or magkaiba tayo ng degree of precision na ginagamit. So may mga maliliit na decimal digits na discrepancy tayong makukuha from your answer from mine kasi nga nag-round off yung computer natin at yung behavior nila ay posibleng iba-iba. So kaya don't worry kung medyo may konting mali dun sa decimal digits sa dulo. So that's okay. And we can attribute that to the difference in the degree of precision or the rounding off arithmetic that uh, that is being used by our computers. So don't worry, okay? Magpanik pag may konting difference yung sagot ko dun sa handout sa kayong nakukuha nyo. I think yung nandun sa handout kasi sinulat ko to na wala pang subscription ng UP sa MATLAB. Ang ginamit ko rito ay Scilab. Ano? Kaya medyo siguro iba yung makikita natin na decimal digits dito. Right, so that's the AIP, and then some of the outputs that uh, I obtain here, actually, salang palain pinagraph ko, uh, the data points and the interpolating function. So that's what you see in figure uh, in figure one. Okay, and indeed I know that tama yung interpolatory procedure ko kasi uh, nagpass through yung given curve doon sa buong interval negative 5 to 3. Kaya lang anong problema? Bakit meron ako rito ang A? Ah, kasi I think, bakit asymptotic to? Bakit meron siyang asymptote dito? Let me see. Ah, okay. There you go. Medyo hindi lang palakita doon sa graph. Pero, is, ah. I don't know kung may asymptote siya dyan. Bakit may dash line dyan? Pero essentially, ito yan. So, umabot naman siya hanggang dun sa 3, alright? So, I, I, need, I just needed to check that. So, hindi siya sumakto ng 3, kasi nga hindi buong negative 3 to 3 yung, uh, ah, negative 5 to 3. Yung makocover ko kasi si 3 ay hindi root nung Legendre polynomial, but I have something close to negative, ah, uh, to positive 3. Kaya dahil konting-konti lang naman yung diferensya, kapag ka nag interpolate tayo using Legendre or using Shebby, 
we are still assuming that the interpolatory interval is from negative one to one. Kasi yung error na gagarantee natin to be, minimi uh, to be minimized on the entire interval negative one to one, even though our smallest and largest abscesses are not negative one and one respectively. All right. Kaya okay magpanic na yung roots ng Legendre, sir, hindi siya umab hindi kasama si negative one. Hindi rin kasama si positive one. So, sir, ibig sabihin ba nun yung interpolatory interval ko hindi na from negative one to one? Well, your interpolatory interval, you're right, would be the minimum x value to the maximum x value that you used as your interpolatory abscissa. Pero ang kagandahan ng Legendre at saka Shebyshev, yung error ay guaranteed to be minimized on the interval negative one to one. Kahit na si one at saka si negative one ay hindi kasama dun sa roots of abscissas. Yeah, naman, it's a little bit of a misnomer. You can consider your interpolatory interval either as the minimum x sub j up to the maximum x sub j, uh, basically the smallest and the largest roots of the Legendre or Chebyshev polynomial, or you can just consider it to be the interval negative one to one. Kung nag-translate ka ng roots, you can consider it to be the close interval a, b, even though the smallest abscissa that you used is not equal to a or is not equal to b. Uh, yung largest naman ay hindi equal kay B, right? So I guess those should be fine. So this, uh, uh, this is the graph that we got for the arctangent function. And you can do a lot of things here. You can compute the error or you can plot the absolute error, right? Katulad nung pinagawa ko sa inyo. Uh, para makita natin kung ano yung posibleng error. Sorry, nag overtime na ako. Pero uh, again, guys, you can leave if you want. Pero guide na rin siguro para dun sa laboratory exercise. Ano? So if katulad dun sa lab exercise, gusto kong uh, makita kung gano'ng kaganda, uh, gano kaganda yung approximation. All right? Because we know the function f, so I know where to compare the algebraic interpolating polynomial to. Ano? So pwede kong ipaplot yung absolute error. Para makita ko gaano kaliit yung mga errors na na-incur in the interpolation process. So what I can ask MATLAB is to plot the absolute error. So pwede ko ipagawa figure para additional figure window. Tapos ano yung ipapaplot ko? Pwede ako mag-define ng absolute value function. Yun yung ipapaplot ko. So I'll have f plot ng absolute value uh, or absolute error function, tawagin natin, nagamit ko na bang R? Di pa, no? So, gawa ako ng isang function R. Ano si function R? Ito yung gagawin kong absolute error. So, this would be the absolute value ng algebraic interpolating polynomial P minus kung ano yung function na ini-interpolate ko. In this case, yung function na ini-interpolate natin ay arctangent. So, arctangent ng x minus e to the x plus 0 0.5 plus x plus 2. Just make sure yung, yung, yung function f na in-interpolate nyo naka-enclose sa buong parenthesis kasi kailangan ko yung p minus the entire function f. So dapat yung entire function f ay naka-enclose sa parenthesis Tapos, I have a closing parenthesis here for the absolute value. So, ito yung papaplot ko para makita gano kalaki yung error doon sa, o yung absolute error sa bawat point. Okay. Tapos, ipapaplot ko siya over the interpolatory interval. Anong tawag sa interpolatory interval? inter -ent. Okay. Tapos, lagyan ko siya ng, uh, tapos, ang line width, gawin kong two units para medyo makapal siya. Pag kinapip na disconnect yata ako doon, pero I hope I'm online again. So, yeah. Uh, okay, I can see you on my other screen. So, ngayon, lagayan ko lang siya ng title. Uh, let me say this is the absolute error. So, this is the plot of the absolute error. Tapos, lagayan ko ng X label para may label yung X axis. So, if you want to format your graph nicely, 
laging yung labels na uh, yung mga text lagi naka uh, naka-enclose uh, single quotes ano so gawin ko tong x kung gusto kong maganda yung pagkaka-type ng x naka-equation style siya so i can use latex command a uh, latex command so naka dollar sign pag nagli latex ko marunong ko mag latex ano tapos kailangan ko lang sabihin kay MATLAB may interpreter ka nagagamitin ang interpreter na gagamitin mo ay latex all right tapos gawa rin ako ng y label so or label para sa y axis so ang command ay y label gagamitin ko gagawin ko lang tong y okay. tapos i can run this uh, hindi ko na i-run uli yung code kasi na compute na naman niya yung mga kailangan natin kanina so i-run ko na lang yung lines 100 to 106 kasi existing na yung mga data na kailangan ko so i'll, I'll either right click and hit evaluate selection in command window or i can just press f9 yun yung shortcut sa keyboard if i do this medyo matagal kasi komplikado na ngayon yung function or mabagal lang yung laptop ko today oh what happened nagreklamo siya ah kasi interp ah okay Yung interpolatory interval pa lang tawag ko ay interp int. Kulang na letter P. There you go. So let me just run this. F9. Okay, lalabas siya. Ito yung problema ko. Ayan. So ito yung absolute error. And the absolute error here is uh, a maximum absolute error ay 0 0.025. So alam natin yung pinakamalaking absolute error. So if you're talking about the uh, if you're talking about uh, if you want to find the supremum error, alam mo na ngayon yung supremum error o yung L infinity norm ng error ay equal kay somewhere higher than 0 0.025. So alam natin malapit dito yung L infinity norm ng error kasi ng L infinity norm ng error yun yung supremum ng absolute uh, difference between p in the interpolating polynomial. So, ang L infinity norm ng error ay ito, somewhere uh, around 0. Uh, 0. 0.027. Okay? So, pwedeng graphical yung pag-compute nyo o pag-estimate nyo ng L infinity norm ng error. Uh, the L2 norm of the error is a little bit trickier because kailangan natin i-integrate yung error squared, yung function error squared. And medyo magiging komplikado siya kasi area under the curve of uh, the error squared yung kailangan nyo. Okay. So para doon, kailangan ko yung pagkocompute, uh, pwede kong gami gamitin yung formula doon sa Lagrange error para makuha yung, uh, yung, L, yung L2 norm ng error. Pero to get that, kailangan ko yung omega. Right. Kailangan nyo yung n plus 1 derivative ng function f na in-interpolate in nyo, tapos kailangan nyo rin si omega. All right. So in this part of the code, I don't know if I have shown you this, yung pagkocompute ng omega, pero just in case I forgot, or I didn't show it to you last time, so I think ginagamit ko pagkocompute ng omega, lines 93 to 93. So remember, omega is the product of x minus x sub j's, as j goes from 1 to the number of points used. So kaya dito sa line 90, kailangan ko munang i- uh, kailangan ko initialize si omega to be equal to 1 kasi isa siyang product ng mga numbers. So ang initial condition sa kanya ay 1. Tapos lines 91 to 93 is a for loop that will compute for omega step by step. So si omega ay equal sa previous value niya times x minus the previous uh, x sub j. All right. So, ko compute niya si omega. After line 93, meron na akong omega. So, ngayon, line 95, kailangan kong kunin. Bakit kailangan ko yung derivative? Ah, dito kinukuha ko yung maximum ni omega. Remember, lagi tayo nagma-maximize ng omega. Pero ngayon, L infinity norm na pala ni omega yung kailangan ko. So, yung lines 95 to 98, eto yung ginagamit gamit ko pag-compute ng L infinity norm ni Omega. Alright? So, kindly take a screenshot of it kung wala pa kayo nito. So, paki, uh, 
screenshot na lang tapos uh, paki-pag-aralan kung ano yung ginagawa niya. Uh, dito naman um uh, itong line 98, ito lang yung comparison between the function values on the critical numbers of omega and on the interpolatory interval. So perhaps here I should just write uh, yung minimum ng inter ng interp int Tapos kailangan ko yung maximum ng interp int. Para i-compare niya ano yung pinakamalaking function value. Kasi remember yung absolute maximum will either occur at a critical number or at the endpoints of your interval. So kaya kinakompare ko yung value ni omega dun sa pinakamayat na absisa at pinakamalaking absisa together with the critical numbers. So ito yung pagkuha ng L infinity norm ni omega. Pag compute naman ng L2 norm ni omega, kailangan ko yung integral ni omega squared. So kailangan kong ipacompute kay MATLAB yung L2 norm ni omega. So tawag na na siyang L2 omega. Ito ay yung integral. Okay, so in int yung command sa pag integrate Dahil so, si omega ay polynomial lang naman, so madali siyang ipa-integrate kay MATLAB. So siya ay integral ng omega squared, omega squared, over the interpolatory interval. So kailangan ng interp int. Hanggang max ng interp int. Okay, let me see. Okay. So yan, integrate niya. Kaya lang, uh, if you remember the formula for the for the L2 norm of omega, dapat ito ay nasa loob pa ng square root. So kunin yung square root ng integral ng omega squared over the interpolatory interval. Tapos yun, makukuha nyo na yung L2 norm na yung omega. So ang problema nyo na lang ay pagkuha ng maximum ng n plus 1 derivative ng function na in-interpolate nyo. So let's just see. So run ko tong, uh, uncomment ko tong lines 90 to 93. And then I'll run it. I'll uh, press F9 para makompute ko si omega. So meron na akong omega ngayon na nakastore sa workspace. So pwede ko nang ipacompute yung L2 norm ni omega. So I'll run line 100, okay, and then I, I'll just, that pala naka-double yung L2 omega, no? Pero yung old L2 omega, pag pinadisplay ko yan, ang sagot ay itong number na to, siguro I'll com convert it to double na kagad para hindi na siya symbolic na fractional. So double, lagay ko yung buong expression inside the double command. And then I'll write omega, uh, I'll run it again. I'll get L2 omega. Then I'll call the value of L2 omega. And it is 6.677 times 10 to the third. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung L2 norm ni omega. Medyo malaki siya kasi nga L2 norm to ni omega, na multiply pa naman to ng n plus 1 derivative ni f at evaluated at the number c divided by n plus 1 factorial. Medyo malaki to kasi... Yung, yung n plus 1 natin dito ay 11. So, meron kang 11 factorial sa ilalim. Factorial of 11. Eto, meron kang denominator na what? 39 million. So, it's uh, 6.67 times 10 to the third divided by 3 point, uh, uh, sorry, divided by 39.9 million times the maximum value of the ninth derivative of f, uh, uh, the il sorry, the 11th derivative of f Evaluated at C. Okay. So, yun. Pero, i comment out ko na lang to muna. Now, uh, last na lang, kasi mukang hindi masyadong nagbi make sense kapag ka relative error lang yung tinning nyo. That's why sometimes I want to look at the uh, relative error instead of the, uh, instead of the, uh, Absolute error. Kasi itong 0.025 yung maximum error or around that neighborhood yung absolute error. I don't know. With respect to what number yan. Kasi plain number lang yung binibigay ng absolute error. Pero hindi ko alam with respect to gano kalaki yung absolute error. right? So that's why usually I want to use the relative error. So minsan instead of that, I'm plotting the absolute error. Uh, sorry, I'm 
yeah, I'm plotting the relative error. So ang gagawin ko lang ay r divided by kung ano yung function na ini-interpolate ko. Okay. Kaya lang baka mas matagal tong magrun kasi ano na to? Complicate uh, absolute value divided by a function. Pero dapat naka-absolute value din pala yung denominator, no? Remember, the, uh, the relative error is the absolute error divided by the actual value or the estimated value. So, kaya meron siyang uh, divisor dyan. Tapos ito ay plot na ng relative error. And I guess this will give us more of an idea of how good the approximation is. Uh, run ko lang siguro to. Sana mabilis lang. Okay, mabilis lang siya. Ito na siya. So, ito yung relative error. So, ibig sabihin, yung relative error niya ay medyo asymptotic dito. So, ibig sabihin, meron kang 70. So, this is uh, 70 times 100%. Bakit ang laki, sir, ng relative error? Bakit nga ba? Uh, actually, asymptotic siya dito. One possible reason ay uh, yeah, asymptotic siya dyan. Tingnan niyo, may asymptote dyan. Kasi dito sa... Baliktad pala, bakit y ito nandito? Ah, sorry. X label pala parehas yung ginawa ko na. Yeah. Nawala yata ako ulit dun for a moment. Uh, uh, okay. So, bakit ang pangit nung, uh, uh, ang laki nung relative error? Ah, ito yung isa sa mga pagkakataon kung kailan hindi nagbe-make sense yung paggamit ng relative error kasi nasa denominator natin yung function f right pag nag zero yung value ng function f magbe blow out yung relative error kaya may asymptote ka dito kasi possibly around this x value uh, ang denominator natin ay equal kay zero uh, sige nga tingnan natin ano yung plot ni f yeah true enough dito sa medyo makalampas ng x equals uh, before it reach zero or actually, wala naman, no? Bakit ganun siya? Ah, uh, let's see. Yeah, let me double check this later kasi meron pang math 151. Sorry, super overtime na, no? Pero helpful tips na rin para sa lab exer. Ah, uh, hindi naman siya nag-zero. Bakit yung relative error ko nag-zero? Unless I forgot something. A 10 x minus x to the fifth plus x plus 2. I think tama naman siya. Pero bakit siya nag-asymptotic? Ah, siguro. Siguro pwede kong ipa-plot si F para makita ko kung bakit nagkaganon. Uh, at least nakikita nyo uh, um, live yung pag pagto-troubleshoot ng problems. No? Okay, so pa-plot ko lang si F para makita ko kung ano nangyari. Ayan. Tingnan nyo to. Ito yung graph ni F. Nag-zero nga siya somewhere around, actually, somewhere around x equals zero. So, ibig sabihin, kapag ang x is around zero, may pagkakataon na malapit na malapit or equal na kay zero yung denominator. And that explain why we have here a well, pero negative one. Huh. Let me double check this. Parang hindi siya nagmamatch. Pero let's see. Ah, yes. Nag-zero siya right before x equals zero. So, kaya kung makikita nyo, dun, nandun talaga yung asymptote niya. So, palakin ko lang din to para makita ko yung visual representation. Yes. Uh, it became zero somewhere here right before x equals zero. Ganun din yung nangyari dun sa relative error. Okay? So, yeah. Uh, some, some analysis, some visual analysis. Ano? Kasi minsan, Mas madaling mag-reason out graphically kesa analytically. Ano? Lalo na mas madali sa computer sa pag-graph ng function kesa paggamit ng first derivative test, ng extreme value theorem, and so on. Okay? So I guess I used up much of your time. Again, I apologize for, for being late. So, but I hope I gave you a, uh, a good idea of how to implement Shebisheb and Legender uh, interpolation, lalo na kapag uh, lalo na para sa XOR sa Monday. Kasi parang nahirapan kayo sa lab XOR nung, uh, nung Monday nung paggamit ng Shebisheb 
uh, which I didn't expect because I was thinking you will just uh, you will just modify a little bit your code from Lagrange interpolation. Kaya nagdagdag ako ng mga items na ina-analyze yung absolute error and so on kasi nga konting work lang or konting revision lang yung gagawin niyo dun sa dun sa dun sa program na ginamit yung in Lagrange paggawa ng shebe shebe. And again, Lagender lang naman uli sa malamang nakapattern ng doon yung gagawin nyo for the next uh, laboratory exercise. So that's why I don't think there should be much of a difficulty in the next laboratory exercise. Pero if there's still some things that are unclear, as usual, you can just uh, you can just send me an email over the weekend and I'll try to answer. You know? So let me see. Uh, a question. Since baka po gamitin yung same equations sa next excerpt, so ayan, nag-iisip na kayo, no? tanong ni Elgin. May other ways pa po ba para makuha yung maximum ng 9 derivative ng function? Doon po kasi sa R10, x cubed plus x e to the x, hindi po nagana yung sim to poly. Pati po hindi kayang i-graph ng MATLAB. Thank you. Oh, really? R10, x cubed plus e to the x? Uh, hindi talaga gagana yung sim to poly kasi yung sim to poly, gumagana lamang siya sa... Gumagana lamang siya for, uh, for polynomials. So yung sim to poly, hindi siya gagana kapag ka hindi na polynomial yung ginagamit. Ah, so nahirapan na siyang i-graph yung ninth derivative ng r 10 x cubed plus e to the x. Let me see. So, sabahin ko siyang F, uh, fp ay ninth derivative. Ah, sorry, Nag nagtatype ako sa MATLAB. Sure yeah. Um, uh, kasi magta-time na, no? kasi may class ako ng 10. Kung hindi nag-work yung, yung analytic, graph na sana yung susunod. Ano? Pero uh, nahirapan ba talaga mag-graph? Hindi ko kasi tinuray yung r ng x cubed plus e to the x. Kailangan niya yung 9 derivative niya. I guess MATLAB can easily find the ninth derivative. The ninth derivative. Tapos ang idea ko ron ay kapag ka, uh, hindi nyo na kayong competent analytically yung ninth derivative, uh, pwedeng ipagraph na lang siya. Pero kung nagka-problema rin sa graphing, uh, actually wala na tayong ibang paraan. Mm, I see. So, but I guess the problem there will be, ano, um, ah, yun yung mahirap sa lab dexter 3. So, siguro dun sa mga napa-assign sa R10 x cubed plus e to the x, uh, kung hindi talaga kinaya ng MATLAB yung 9 derivative niya, or natagalan lang or something, uh, sige, I'll, I'll, I'll tell your lab instructors to, uh, to sort of give you... To adjust a little bit. Kasi yun yata yung pinakamahirap, no? Yung R10 x cubed plus e to the x dun sa, dun sa mga items. Yung iba madali lang kasi logarithm lang ng x plus 2. So we will adjust for those na nag-work ng R10 x cubed plus e to the x. Sorry about that. Pero inimbento ko lang kasi yung function. Uh, uh, ibang site yung ginamit. Right. Uh, meron kasi rin akong backup. Meron akong matematika na ginagamit. And Mathematica is much more designed for symbolic calculations than MATLAB. Kasi yung MATLAB ang forte niya talaga ay uh, matrices and vectors. So dun siya magaling. Yung Mathematica, mas magaling siya sa symbolic comp computations. So probably, uh, I think kayang-kaya ni MATLAB kunin yung ninth derivative ng function. Nahihirapan lang siya sa pag pag-graph. So pwede kayong gumamit ng... Uh, Ano nga yung usual na ginagamit na pang graph? Nakalimutan ko yung tawag. Uh, anong app yun? Ah, I forgot. So what you can do is to search for the net for a nice uh, graphing. Uh, ayun, uh, sorry. Tama si Christian. Parang yun nga yun. You can use Desmos. I think Desmos can do it. Or GeoGebra. Okay then. So pa-compute nyo kay MATLAB. Kaya naman ni MATLAB compute yung 9 derivative, no? Kasi yun yung, yun yung tinry ko eh. Nung, nung ginawa ko yung XR, pinacompute ko kay MATLAB yung ninth derivative. Alam ko kaya niya. Kasi yun yung ginawa ko nung nag-invento nag ako ng functions. Tapos hindi ko na nga lang pinagraph. Kasi ang ginawa ko na ng answer K ay yung log X plus 2. Ano. So pwede kayong pumunta sa Desmos, sa GeoGebra para kunin yung graph ni uh, nung ninth derivative. 
kasi no compute niyo na naman yung 9 derivative kay MATLAB lipat kay sa GeoGebra or kay Desmos. Tapos kukunin niyo lang naman yung maximum ano. So, mapipinpoint niyo doon around anong number yung uh, yung maximum. Tapos pag ganun yung ginawa niyo, um isama niyo yung graph. Ayun, nagkaantay na yung mga math 151 pips. Pero anyway, sama niyo yung graph dun sa report niyo, dun sa lab excerpt para malaman ko na ah Okay, ang ginamit niya ay tinignan niya yung graph, doon siya kumuha ng estimate para doon sa maximum, and that's perfectly fine. Okay? Tayo na lang. So, siguro, um, meron ba mga hindi nakatapos ng lab excerpt about that? Or, or because of that? Uh, probably, uh, huh? I will ask your lab instructors to be a little lenient doon sa mga napa-assign doon sa R10, kasi nga hindi siya kinaya ng MATLAB alone. If talagang drain na drain na kayo, baka hindi nyo na naisip na lumipat ng graphing software. Ano. So siguro, sabihan ko yung mga lab instructors, so be a little bit extra lenient with that or give you another chance to complete the exercise. Okay? So any other questions or concerns? Okay, so if there are none, so I hope you guys will enjoy the weekend. Although alam po, ini-spoil ko yung weekend nyo kasi binibigay ko late Friday yung laboratory exercise for a Monday. Uh, pero I think that's uh, better. Nasa inyo naman yun if you want to use the weekend. Kasi otherwise, I'll give it na lang on Monday. You know? Pero for those of you who are uh, um, who are more on the nerdy side or medyo conscious lang about Math 174, alam ko ginagawa nyo over the weekend. Kasi marami akong emails na natatanggap during the weekends asking for hint in the laboratory exercise and that's perfectly fine with me. Kaya lang hindi ako on call on the weekend so medyo minsan matagal. Kung kailan lang nagche-check ng Teams chat o kaya nagche-check ng email saka ako nakakasagot. Pero other than that, uh, I'll try my best to reply to you over the weekend. Okay? All right. So siguro ganun na lang uh, probably I can recycle the exercise from last time. Tapos uh, tapos same function ba? Siguro same function na lang din. Uh, sorry na lang dun sa mga napa-assign dun sa R10 ng XQ. Pero at least ngayon alam nyo na na kailangan nyo gumamit ng Desmos or GeoGebra para dun, ano So para may comparison. Kasi maganda na may storya yung mga lab exercise. Ano? Iko-compare nyo ngayon yung nakuha, na, nakuha nyo from, from Legendary nodes to the ones with Shebisheb nodes, etc. So Mitzi, yes, uh, I want you to watch the recording. Uh, I-link ko na lang siya pag in-upload. Uh, uh, I-link ko na lang mamaya pag in-upload ko yung recording uh, of our session today. Plus the recording from last year, which is about yung counting part ng Legendary Polynomials dun sa module. Right? You can just do self-study. Kung kaya nyo nang mabasahin lang yung module, that's perfectly fine. But if you want to, to watch my discussion about it, I'll give you a link for it, okay? So yeah, sorry, super, super overtime na. Nagantay na yung mga 151 people. So thank you guys for bearing with me today. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. And let's see each other again on Wednesday, all right? Bye, guys.